As we descend the ladder, we get a bird's eye view of the layout. So let's just take a bit of time and have a look round. On the far side is Byford Station and Town. This leads on to an industrial section which then takes us further round to Byford Old Town. Down the centre of the layout are the engine sheds. At the top is a small diesel shed and further down is the main steam shed. At the side of this is a cassette trolley for extra storage of rolling stock which I will explain about later. If we go back to the main layout and come down the right hand side you will see the storage yards hidden behind a back scene and the country section. And now emerging from Eiffel Tunnel is a locomotive so if we now go down to ground level we can look at this in greater detail. As the locos leave the tunnel, they cross the main line junction. They then pass the little woodman's cottage. This is a laser cut kit which has had extra detail and weathering applied to it. Further along is a little roadwork scene where we see the tarmac gang busy repairing a damaged section of road. Now as we approach Byford Station we enter the goods yard and here we see a Robinson J11 which is just departing with a local goods train and then the Little Midland 1F which is a station pilot and is busy shunting in the yard. Now we enter Byford Station itself. Elsewhere on the layout I've been converting to semaphore signals as I much prefer their realistic movement. But on the station platforms we still have coloured light signals as I haven't yet thought of a way to neatly cut through the platforms and fit the servos needed underneath. The station building is a Town Street model. I have quite a few of these on the layout as I really like the textured finish you can achieve with their stone cast panels. Just by coincidence it's market day today so we'll take a quick look round while we're in town. As we make our way along the station you can see the town high street in the background with all the shops there. These buildings are a mixture of propriety and scratch built models, some of which are Walther's American kits which have been modified by adding ridge roofs and chimneys to make them fit better into an English style layout. In the front is the station parcels depot and just a little further along is the Morris dealers garage and then we have the local bus depot. At the top of the hill is Alma Street. No space is wasted in these small houses. Every backyard is used for something.
Now we go down Old Bank Place. A busy scene here with lots going on. Gossiping neighbours, dustbins to empty, steps to clean and a bargain to be struck with a local odd job man. At the bottom of the hill we reach the canal and beyond it is Blackburn's large shipping and storage warehouse. This is another town street now. Hidden behind the warehouse is Mr Dibner's workshop. When he isn't busy knocking down chimneys, this is where he comes to fettle his traction engines. Most of the buildings in this area, including Joshua Wright's mill complex and all the streets, are scratch built, as I wanted them to look typical of the area being modelled and I also needed them to fit in specific locations. While we are in this area, we can take a closer look at the mill, where we can see them carrying out the dangerous task unloading the heavy bales of wool ready for processing in the mill. We are now at Hilltop Road Cottages which face onto the Memorial Gardens. Then as we proceed further down the hill we reach Bedford Street and Viaduct Street. Once again these little streets are bustling with activity and the backyards are filled with the clutter of the things needed for everyday life in the late 50s. At the end of the street is an abandoned building which is clearly marked Keep Out but in reality it's just an adventure playground for the local schoolboys. Now we come to the central section of the layout and the first thing we see there is the recently completed diesel shed complex. This is filled with the spares and tools needed to maintain these diesels which in their early days could prove quite troublesome as it was all new technology then. Also included there are the refuelling facilities that are needed to keep these machines running. Now at the steam shed, which has been laid out to provide a progressive route in order that the locos are maintained properly, the first thing we see is the turntable with a Princess Pacific on it waiting to be turned. Working down the shed, we pass the coaling tower, the cruise restroom and the ash tower. The ash tower has its own narrow gauge feeder system to facilitate removal of ash from the locomotives around. Carrying on down we come to the main engine shed. This is the third version I built on this site and this time it comprises two scale model scenery kits which have been chopped and cut to fit together 
onto the existing track plan. I chose this kit because it looked more realistic and it also gave me room to add detail and lighting inside. At the same time I added a little side workshop which was a bit pointless really as once it's in place you can't see it but it was an enjoyable little project to do. The layout was originally designed to work from the NCE ProCab system and their macro routing and most of the time I still use this now but I have been gradually installing the JMRI system which gives me extra advantages in computer control based on an old laptop. With the laptop I can control both locos and routing plus accessories. In addition to this I can connect in any Android tablet or smartphone and use it as a wire free throttle for local control and with the addition of a touch screen I can control all the loco movements just by selecting the appropriate route. If we go along the back of the steam shed we will find a support shelf where I can place my cassette storage modules. Each cassette is a standard 120 centimeters long so it will hold a short goods train or four standard Mark 1 passenger coaches. This means that with a combination of any two cassettes I can make up an eight coach passenger train which is the maximum I was designed for or a decent length goods train. Underneath the baseboard is my cassette trolley which I can wheel out when needed and this holds all my spare stock in labelled sets. So now with a loaded cassette in position we can call up a suitable loco from the steam shed. The loco will then reverse into the cassette siding and collect its assignment for today which in this case is a short goods train. Now to conclude our tour we take a look at the countryside section. We start by seeing the Welsh Guardsmen heading into the North Tunnel and onwards to the storage sidings. And then we scan down to visit the Station Master's Cottage with its vegetable garden attached. This is another laser cut kit with extra features added and in the garden and the greenhouse there's a plentiful supply of vegetables to supplement the station master's diet. And waiting at the station for passengers from the 6pm commuter train is the local service double decker bus. And this is Oxenholme station in the country section and as we scan down the platform to the signal box we will see the local passenger train arriving.
continuing on into the country, we reach Feldale Viaduct, which spans the ravine and a river complete with rushes. And finally, we return to Feldale Tunnel once again, just in time to see the Guardsman emerging on the final leg of its journey. And now, as darkness falls, it's time to call it a day, and our layout tour comes to an end. <laughs>